topic is identifying properties of structure disorder, candidate both sides using identity by descent mapping methods. And I'm supervised by Dr. Michelle Liu. So the first question is, what are autism spectrum disorders? Well, autism spectrum disorders are a heterogeneous disorder affecting 1 in 68 children in the United States and approximately 1 in 100 in Canada. According to DSM-4 diagnostic criteria, there are three main things that clinicians look out for in autism patients. The first is social interaction. So, for example, a lot of autism patients have a problem in social settings and interacting with those around them. Sometimes they're not even aware that people are around them in uh, those cases. And communication, uh, for example, a lot of the autism patients have problems picking up a new language or have uh, problems communicating with others. And behavior, so an example would be uh, the autism patient uh, demonstrating repetitive uh, movements or uh, like things like that. And the severity of ASD patients vary, uh, and the symptoms cover a whole spectrum. So that's where uh, ASD gets its name from. So one of the more severe uh, cases of ASD would be autistic disorder, and a more uh, less severe form of ASD would be Asperger's. So what is the underlying cause of ASD? Well, there are a lot of factors. Environmental factors play a part as well. But for our research study, we're interested in the genetics behind ASD. And how do we even know that genetics actually plays a part in ASD? Well, previous studies um, with uh, twins and family studies show that there was a high concordance rate uh, in monozygotic twins and a lower concordance rate in dizygotic twins. And concordance rates just means that both the twins are showing uh, are, are showing for disease. And the difference between monozygotic and dizygotic is that monozygotic twins originate from the same zygote. Um, as you can see there, it's splitting up identical, uh, like, it's splitting up the same zygote. So in that case, you have the identical genomes for both twins, whereas dizygotic twins originate from two separate zygotes, and both twins would have different genomes. And this is uh, important for us to study because um, we would expect monozygotic twins to have high progonics rates because they have a similar uh, genetic background. And ASD is a highly studied uh, disease because it's also known as a complex disease. And what makes ASD such a complex disease is that, for example, you could have two people with the same symptoms for ASD, but they could have completely different genetic mutations if you take these patients out and actually look at their genetic sequences. There are multiple genes involved in ASD, so it's not just one, like cystic fibrosis. And there are environmental factors also playing a role as well. So people are looking at the interaction of like their genes and the surrounding environmental factors and seeing that interaction as well. So how do you find genes related to ASC? A big part of the reason why I was able to conduct my study for this summer is because genetic technology is improving and they're becoming more efficient as well. And we also have a lot of data uh, in our databases for, um, for ASD patients. And the technology that is used um, could be microarrays, exome sequencing, or more recent whole genome sequencing. And the basis of how we conduct our research study is um, we're focused on identity by descent segments. And what identity by descent segments are is if you look at um, this example <coughs> here at the top, you, can, you have half siblings. So they have 
different uh, overall genomes, but they do share sections of their DNA which are completely identical. And we also can validate that these identical segments originate from the same uh, parents as well. So that so these two um, would be considered identity by descent segments. And to further uh, take home the message of if you look at the two affected siblings um, from the parents, you can see that both of them for that allele uh, take have um, copy one from uh, from the father uh, indicated in blue, and the other allele would be different as what is inheriting from the dad. I mean, what is inheriting from the mom and the others parents from the dad? And the methods used by our group um, are called IBD mapping, and IBD mapping involves using both cases who are patients who are affected by ISD and control individuals who are unaffected. And we can scan the genome uh, at particular windows and compare the amount of um, identity by descent sharing at each of the chromosomal regions. And we can and we can do that study by using case-case pairs, combined case and control. So putting all the individuals together, together and separating them using control and control pairs. And the student before me, uh, Jillian, she did a pairwise study. So she took pairs of individuals and looked at the amount of uh, sharing uh, between them. So for example, the square box is indicated, uh, for example, identical segment. So then we can consider this um, pairwise sharing. And from her study, she was able to narrow down her focus of interest to two particular regions at 2Q37.3. Um, this is just uh, a way to describe uh, genetic location at 14Q22.1. And nine genes were, fo were found at 2Q37.3 and 50 genes found at 14Q22.1. And that's a problem because with all of these genes found within the same region, it's hard for us to differentiate which of these genes are actually involved within uh, with ASD. So my hypothesis is that at disease-causing regions, ASD cases have significantly more uh, identity by descent sharing compared to control individuals. And my objective is to identify chromosomal segments associated with ASD. Um, so all the information that I use for my study comes from a large database. Um, this database is called the Autism Genome Project Database. Um, and in our case, we had an even split from 2,428 individuals. We had 1,214 cases and 1,214 controls. And the type of um, individuals or families that we obtained our data is called a multiplex family. So there is more than one individual being affected within that family. And the number of uh, markers that are used is well over 700,000. So to take the results that we had previously using a pairwise study, we can use uh, what is called a multiple individual study. So instead of taking, um, so what the idea comes from is if you have person one and two, they have sharing at those segments, but then you also have person three who also has the segment that is sharing as well, that you can actually create clusters of individuals. Um, to further extend pairs, and we can take these clusters and we can scan along the genome and see where these clusters are coming from along the genome. And then we can do what is known as a sequence kernel association test, which is a later mixed model to see whether or not um, the affected individuals have more sharing than controlled individuals. So the significance of my study is that we can narrow down regions of interest, so regions that were already identified previously, and look at it from a higher resolution. So instead of, so we have an interest, region of interest may be this big, but with my method, we can actually shrink that region to become more specific. 
Um, and with our results, we would look at chromosome 2 and um, just along uh, the horizontal axis, you have um, the chromosomal uh, window. And we worked and we were able to find uh, certain regions which were below the cutoff threshold. But after doing a resampling, resampling method, which is uh, a way to correct for uh, like sampling errors, these, these regions weren't significant. And then things got a lot more interesting when we looked at chromosome 14. And then again, we looked at the p-values in our region of interest. And we had these three regions which were below our cutoff value, 105. And after doing our resampling and correcting for our sampling errors, we found that this region over here, around 48.5 sent organs, to be uh, significant. So what I did is I looked a bit deeper at, and see which genes were actually within these uh, windows of interest. And I was able to find one gene in this area, EMP4, circled over here. And EMP4 is a bone morph morphogenetic protein. It plays a role in endochondral bone formation and mutations have been related to heterodyl disorder, fibrodysplasia, ossificans progressiva. It's a mouthful. And uh, on the surface, it might not necessarily be, you know, it looks, uh, related to bone, right? Like, where does this really tie to ASD, right, in, um, in our study? But um, if you look at what the MP4 binds to, uh, LRP2, which is a lipoprotein receptor related protein 2, is a known risk gene for ASD, and it's involved in early patterning of the brain. And it is known that the MP4 is an interacting partner with one of these risk genes for ASD. So our future directions is we're going to continue our study to look at the entire genome. Um, our study was an initial study that only looked at our regions of interest, but this can be further extended to all of the chromosomes. And we can also extend our studies and our methods to other databases as well, such as the Simon Simplex Foundation data, which is another database that also contains uh, information from ASD patients. And I'd like to thank everybody for listening to my talk today, and uh, to my lab members, and Dr. Luis Smart, and uh, for providing me with great criticism um, and being a good sounding board for me uh, during during the term. And uh, and obviously, I thank Dr. Shelley for uh, taking me on as a student and teaching me a lot this summer. And that's it. Always open for questions. Yeah. So, uh, good job breaking down some complex genetics to something you know we can kind of try and understand. So, I'm always interested in what's you know what's kind of the importance of these findings. So, you identified this region that seems to be important. And you identify that there's only a single gene in that region, so you think that this is linked to your disease. But really, I'm kind of lost as to what the next step that you would do to see that it's actually that there's actually causing disease. And did you actually find like there was a polymorphism in that gene, or some kind of polymorphism maybe in promoter that might be? Uh, associated with disease in the cases versus the controls? Yeah. Um, so what's different from our study uh, compared to a lot of other genome-wide association studies is because genome-wide association, stu association studies usually looks at SNP markers, which are single nucleotide polymorphism markers. But what we, we do is we look at entire regions. So instead of looking at a single base pair, we look at actual uh, chunks of DNA, so we can't say that, um, like, uh, BMAP4, that gene that I found, is um, exactly like we know that this is caused. We just hypothesize that it could be related to disease, and how, it, how I was able to find that is because.
for that region, um, there, there was identical um, segments um, for, for the patients. So um, it wasn't just that gene, but like that area surrounding it was also identical too. So looking at that region, we were able to narrow it down and find that gene. And uh, just to further um, answer your question on how we be able to validate um, whether or not our gene actually does something, well, um, in that case, uh, you'd have to go to functional studies and actually uh, do maybe gene knockouts for that gene in uh, cell lines or also in animal models as well to see whether or not um, those animals or cell lines um, look at the, like the morphology of the cells or something whether or not there's a difference. Yeah, but ASD is kind of a tough one to really study because it's a behavioral kind of disorder. So like, I don't know if you can get like ASD, like autism, nice or something, see whether or not they communicate with mice. So do you know if there is any established model of ASD in animals? Uh, they, do, they do mice studies. Um, another study they do uh, have fetal alcohol syndrome disorder affects, uh, affects uh, the prevalence of ASD in, uh, in the children. So when like the mom ingests a lot of alcohol, um, they've seen um, a high prevalence um, in autism in the children and they've simulated that by um, treating mice with alcohol and seeing whether or not they show the similar symptoms. Yeah. What's a Sam Morgan? Sam Morgan? Yeah. It's based on combination frequency. So, um, well, what does it measure? It measures um, like the okay, like the distance between two um, two sides. So, um, so the closer um, the closer the the two um, sides are, then like there's a like basically to explain it, um, during cell division, there's something called a combination where there's like a crossing over between um, segments of DNA um, between chromosomes, and then basically, cell morphing is like of the progeny of those cells. What is the percentage of those cells still became um, still on the same? same chromosome and how many percent are actually um, on another chromosome. So one cent more game would, would mean that out of a hundred of those individuals, um, there's only maybe like one out of those a hundred where there was crossing over. Please join us in thinking. This concludes the uh, presentation.